Let me start my talk by asking everyone in this hall a question. Have you ever lost hope in life? Have you ever experienced the hopelessness feeling? A painful feeling that might cause you severe mental health problems. A painful feeling that might lead you to drugs or alcohol addiction. Hopefully the answer is no, and hopefully you will never experience such feeling. In this exact moment that I'm speaking to you, millions are losing hope. And millions have already lost it, especially those who live in war zones. When people lose hope, they lose their motivation, they lose their persistence, they give up their goals and dreams, and they lose their energy. And the main reason why they do so, because they believe they are unable to change their reality and influence the factors surrounding them. Well, I'll try today to change this misconception. By the way, I'm from this place, Syria, a place that almost everyone on this earth has heard about it because of the ongoing war. But today, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you stories about how Syrian kids are freezing in camps, how half of my country have been destroyed, and how half of my people have been displaced. Today, I'm gonna tell you a different kind of story. A story that has something similar to Yusra Mardini and Rami Anis, the two Syrians who made it to the Olympic last year. A story that has something similar to Abdurrahman Ashraf, the Syrian guy who won the European Youth Award for inventing an application that allows smartphones to communicate offline. And my story is very humble compared to those stories and to several other stories of people who challenged the war to achieve their goals and dreams. And it's not a unique story as well. In fact, it's the story of thousands whom I'm trying to be their voice here today to hopefully regenerate the hope inside those who have lost it. My story started in 2012. After seeing my country being destroyed, the economy collapsing, after seeing my people killing each other, after seeing the hate, vandalism, and crime spreading massively in my country, I lost hope. I lost my motivation and persistence, and I gave up, up my goals and dreams, and I lost all of my energy. And as an ambitious person, I was dying not from the war that was surrounding me, I was dying from the hopelessness feeling, a feeling like there's a knife stabbed in my heart and I can't take it out. A feeling, if I were to describe it in two words, I would say dying slowly. This situation continued for like six months till I reached the rock bottom where I was ready to do anything to alleviate my suffering. And in a one specific day in 2012, the day that I will never forget in my life, I decided to take the most important decision ever. I decided to move out of the hopelessness zone. On that day, the situation in Syria changed dramatically, and a brutal battle started in my city. And I still remember every single moment of that day. I still remember looking at my neighborhood from my flat, seeing people are panicking, stores are closing, and soldiers spreading all over the place, putting checkpoints. I still remember seeing the fears inside people's eyes from not knowing what tomorrow will bring. I still remember sitting on my couch, hopelessly, no electricity, only the candle light and my cigarette light I used to smoke at that time, and everything I was hearing is the non-stop, intensive bullets and missiles five kilometers away from me. I was sitting with all the pain inside me, reviewing my life, my dreams, my goals, how all of them are fading away. And I said to myself, this should be the end. Today, I might die as a collateral damage if this battle five kilometers away reaches my neighborhood. But if for any reason I survive that day, tomorrow is gonna be a new day in my life, a new start. Eventually, I survived that day and the battle didn't reach my area. No hopelessness anymore, no negativity anymore, no sit and do nothing anymore. This is what I decided on that day. And here I would like to share the first message with people who lost hope or who might lose hope in the future. Please know what triggers your inner power. Hopelessness is something inside you. It's caused by external factors, but it comes from inside. And the solution comes from inside as well. Don't count on anyone to get you out of there. Just get rid of all negativity and understand what triggers your inner power. For me, it was seeing my dreams, goals fading away in front of my eyes triggered me to do something to change my reality. 
For you, it might be your wife, your kids, your husband, goals, dreams, any of these things. And if you don't have any of these things, then do it for yourself. Do it for the sake of not living with this painful feeling. My goal was very simple. To study a master's degree in one of the best universities in the UK. For some, studying a master's degree is like climbing 10 meters over the mountain. But for me, it was like climbing Everest. Climbing Everest with no climbing equipment and in the middle of a storm. For me to study a master's degree in the UK, I needed to learn a new language from scratch. I needed to save every pound of my salary for 10 years or to have a scholarship. I needed to learn how to write essays, motivation letter, personal statements, filling application, all these things which, which I didn't know what was that at that time. And here I would like to share with you my second message for today. Know which mountain you want to climb and understand the needed equipment to climb it. In other words, know your goals. It might sound as a cliche, know your goal, isn't it? Then why a lot of people don't know what their goal in life is? Not having a very clear goal in life is like sailing without a destination. Do you want to sail without a destination? I don't think so. And most importantly, know how to achieve it. Know its requirement. So after I understood my goal and its requirement, I started pursuing them day and night. I started waking up 5 o'clock in the morning when nobody interrupts me to study the English. And I struggled to learn the language. I struggled because in my country, we don't exercise the English neither in our daily life, nor in the professional field, nor in the academic field. And it was so difficult to study a language without exercising it. It was like learning how to drive theoretically and not practically. But that was fine. Three years of hard working, I managed to achieve my target in IELTS. In fact, the difficult part was in the second requirement, the funding. It's impossible to save every pound of my salary for 10 years. And a scholarship was not an option for me at that time because almost all scholarships require a high GPA in the undergrad, which I didn't have. And I can't go back in time and change my undergraduate grades. And I needed to figure out something to solve this big obstacle, to move this big rock out of my way. And I said to myself, if I can't go back in time and change my undergraduate grades, then I'll go forward. And I decided to enroll in a part-time master's degree in Syria just to improve my academic history. And I struggled again. I struggled to balance my life. I had a wife, a kid, a full-time job, learning English, and doing master's. But I managed to achieve my target again, a GPA of 3.2. And I managed to do so by exploiting every single moment of my day, especially the daily time that I used to spend while stopping at checkpoints. I managed to, to, to learn to, to exploit this time through reading academic articles and learning English vocabularies. So it took me three consecutive years of hard working not to achieve my goal, but just to be eligible to submit an application and enter the competition along with thousands of candidates to a scholarship that its acceptance rate is less than 4%. And here I would like to share two important messages. The first one, if you don't have the equipment to climb your mountain. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. They are out there somewhere and you just need to work hard to get them. And the second message is know what keeps you climbing. Achieving your goal might be a daunting task that might take you years. It depends on what your goal is and what you already have to achieve it. And you need to have a very strong motivation to put this continuous effort over a long period of time. For me, it was my unlimited will to secure a better future for my wife, for my kid, and for myself. Everyone should have something that motivates them. Please discover it. You will really need it. So as I said previously, I was trying to climb in the middle of a storm. And what I meant is the conditions that were surrounding me while trying to achieve my goal. I used to live in a place where you only see electricity nine hours per day. A place where sometimes I needed to wear four or five layers of clothes to survive the winter cold. Not because I couldn't afford fuel, but because it was unavailable in my city. So imagine 40 degrees in the summer, no, heat, no air conditioning, and zero degree in the winter, no heating. 
I used to live in a place where the sound of mortars, bullets, jet fighters, and missiles don't stop. You hear them on a daily basis. And personally, I survived death more than 10 times from mortars. And all of these deadly events have happened to me in a 50 meter radius. The economy was collapsing. I lost 80% of my salary. So imagine losing 80% of your salary while having the same level of expenses. My university was located in an unstable area. So the journey to my university was one of those journeys that might have a bad ending. And it was located near a military base. So imagine sitting in the lecture theater or meeting your supervisor and every now and then you hear missiles launching or you feel the building shaking. And lastly, unfortunately, the closest people to me, the closest, didn't support me during this journey. So imagine climbing your mountain in such storm. Imagine achieving your goal and studying in such conditions. All of the previous were like heavy rocks, raindrops, winds hitting my persistence and determination while trying to achieve my goal. And bear in mind that this is the situation of millions and it was considered a heaven compared to other people. During this journey, I failed eight times and received those unfortunately emails eight times. And I was so close to give up. And here I would like to share with you my last message for today. No matter what circumstances you're living, it's up to you to overcome your difficulties. It's up to you to stand on your feet after each failure. Failure is a normal part of the journey. And don't blame the world when you fail, because when you're doing so, you're just giving yourself a very good reason to quit. Failure should be like a break in the journey, a short break, where you take a breath and analyze how things could be done better. I still remember when I failed the eighth time, and I said to myself, that's it. I'm not gonna waste my time anymore on these things. And then I asked myself a question. Do you want to go back to the hopelessness swamp? Do you want to lose everything you've done so far? Do you want to live as a loser in this life? And I decided to take this one step further. And I decided to apply for the ninth time. And I discovered that I was about to surrender one step of achieving my goal, one step. If I hadn't taken that one step, I wouldn't have stood today here in front of you. In the ninth try, I've done it. I received this congratulation email. One of the best moments of my life, seeing the four year efforts translated into an outcome. A moment that washed away all the suffering immediately. And hear me along with my colleagues, receiving one of the most competitive scholarship in the world, Chivnik Scholarship, a scholarship provided by the UK government to highly qualified international students. And last year, more than 41,000 candidates applied to this scholarship. So I won my scholarship, and I arrived to Scotland, super excited to achieve my goal, super happy, and I thought, that's it, no storms anymore. Now I can focus on achieving my goal. But I was wrong. Living away from my family, who live in a war zone, caused me several waves of severe depressions. In a certain time, my kid was refusing to speak to me over Skype, refusing to speak to me over the phone, simply because he couldn't understand why his dad is not here anymore, why his dad is not playing with him anymore, not hugging him anymore. So imagine how that had impacted me. But I know he will understand when he grows up. With the support that I received from the University of Glasgow, my professors, my friends, and the wonderful Glaswegian people, with my determination to make my family proud of me and to show that we can achieve no matter what, I managed to overcome this difficult period. And I achieved a distinction as well. Because as, you said, as I said previously, it's up to you to overcome your difficulties. If you want, you can. So my talk has almost reached its end. And I would like to end it by sharing with you my vision to myself, developing people. In this world, not everyone is privileged like you and me to build strong capabilities and to have strong education. Inspired by Syrian societies, societies that promote transferring the knowledge, societies like I give 
Institute of Human Resources Management, and my doctor, inspired by those nonprofit societies, I want to become a social entrepreneur who facilitates transferring the knowledge between those who have it and those who need it and cannot afford it. I want to help people continue their education. And I have already started working on achieving this vision through participating in establishing the Syrian network in Glasgow. A network of qualified people that one of its main aim is to help Syrians continue their education. So five years ago, I was sinking in the hopelessness swamp. And today I'm standing here in front of you, a person with two master degrees with distinctions, preparing for my third one. I'm standing here as a part of a global network of 46,000 Chivning alumni who work together to solve the world problems. And in the future, I will stand again here, but at that time as a social entrepreneur who, help, who helps others to achieve their goals and dreams. And all of that, not because I was lucky, but because I refused to surrender. And I urge you, and I urge everyone who lost hope or who might lose hope in the future, don't surrender. I know that you've gone through a very difficult time. Believe me, I can feel you. But please understand something. We need you. We need the doctor, the entrepreneur, the psychologist, the lawyer, journalist that you have dreamt of being. We need you to stand on your feet and help others to do so. We need the smile that was stolen from your face. We need you here on this stage, not in the hopelessness swamp. Please keep climbing and don't surrender. Please, thank you. Thank you.